Hello, my dear students. Here's Miss Polong. Today we shall discuss class six English one on a topic Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Okay, now let me give you a brief introduction about the author of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The author is Joel Ta. He was born in 13 September 1916 and died on 23 November 1990. Roald Dahl was a British novelist, short story writer, poet, screenwriter, and fighter pilot. He is revered as one of the greatest storytellers for children of the 20th century. Dahl's works for children include Gems and the Giant Peach, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda, The Witch, and fantastic Mr. Fox. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is the story about the desire of a young lad Charlie Bucket who hails from a poor family. Charlie has a passion for chocolates but cannot afford to buy one. So his grandparents narrate him stories of Mr. Willy Wonka who owns a giant chocolate factory. Okay now let's begin the story about the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So once upon a time, there was a little young boy named Charlie Bucket who lived in a small wooden house in the outskirts of a big town. So the Bucket, he lived with his grandpa Joe and grandma Josephine, grandma George and grandma Georgina. Their house was not large and not enough for so many people and their life was extremely uncomfortable. In the house, there were only two rooms and one bed so that bed was given to the four old grandparents but then the grandparents were always tired and they never get out of the bed and mr and mrs buckets and little charlie buckets sleep in other room above ma mattresses for them summer were not so bad as winter when there is extremely bad or unpleasant weather and cold air blowing through their floor all night long as they were too poor to buy one more bed or better house. In their family, only Mr. Bucket had a job. He worked in a toothpaste factory. He used to sit all day long on a bench and screw little caps on top of two toothpaste tubes. And he was poorly paid, so he was never able to earn enough money to meet the needs of his family. So there was not enough money even to buy proper food. So they could afford only bread and macarons for breakfast, boiled potatoes and cabbage for lunch and cabbage soup for dinner. So for them, Sunday were a bit better. They all looked forward to Sunday because everyone was allowed a second helping. So the buckets, they did not starve, but every one of them, the two grandfather and grandmother, and Charlie father and Charlie mother, and especially the little Charlie himself, went about for whole day, from morning till night, from morning till night with an empty feeling in their stomach. So among their family, Charlie was filled worst of all but then his father and mother they used to give their share for lunch or dinner to charlie but it was never enough for growing boy he dis desperately wanted something more filling and satisfying than cabbage and cabbage soup because as they were both they could not afford any other than the cabbage soup and margarines and bread so one thing that he longed for more than anything else was a chocolate so, when he used to walk to school in the morning, Charlie could see great slab of chocolate built up high in the soft windows. So he would stand still and stare, pressing his nose against the glass. Then, often during the day, he would see other children taking out bars of creamy chocolate from their pockets and munching them greedily. That was real torture for Charlie, as he could not afford to buy a chocolate. As his family were poor, Charlie Buckets had a chance to test a bit of chocolate only on his birthday as his whole family used to save their money to cherish the Charlie's birthday occasions. So when his great day or his birthday arrived, Charlie was always presented with one small chocolate bar to eat it all by himself. So every year he received it only once in his birthday morning and then he would place it carelessly in a small wooden box that which he owned and he treasured it like a bar of solid gold. So on the next day of his birthday he allowed himself only to look at it but never touch. And then one day he would peel back a tiny bit of the paper 
wrapping and take a tiny nipples, the lovely sweet taste of the chocolate would spread slowly over his tongue. So in the next day also he would take another tiny nipples. In this way Charlie would save his birthday chocolate for more than a month. And then there is one awful thing that tortured Charlie the most. It was more worse than seeing slab of chocolate in the soap windows or watching other children munching bars of creamy chocolate. So that is within sight of the house in which Charlie lived, there was an enormous chocolate factory. So just imagine. It was the worst feelings because he could not afford even to buy a one packet of chocolate. But then there was a enormous chocolate factory near his house, so he could just see that chocolate and he could not afford to have that. So it was the largest and most famous factory in the area. So that is the Wonka factory, Wonka chocolate factory. It was owned by a Mr. Willy Wonka, the greatest inventor and maker of chocolates ever. So what an incredible breathtaking place it was. It had huge iron gates and a high wall surrounding it. So smoke were blanching from its chimney all the time and strange wheezing. Sounds coming from deep within outside the walls for half a, half a mile around in every direction. The air was sent with a heavy rich smell of melting chocolate. So just imagine the little Charlie was long for chocolate the most and more than anything else but he could not have it as his family were very very poor but then there was a big factory of chocolate near his house. So just imagine how he would be. And then the little Charlie bucket twice a day on his way to school he has to pass walk past the gate of the chocolate factory every time he went by he would begin to walk slowly when he reached the gate of the chocolate factory then he would hold his nose high in the air and he would take long deep breath of the gorgeous chocolate smell and then he would say to himself that how he loved that smell oh that he could go inside the factory mr willy wonka factory and then the little Charlie baguettes every evening after dinner he used to go into the room of his grandparents to listen to their stories and to bid them good night. Then each of his grandparents was over 90. It was nine over 90 years. And then they were they become smaller and it appears wrinkled on their face and throughout the day they lay on the bed. As soon as they heard the jolly voice saying good evening Grandpa Joe, Grandma Josephine, Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina, then all of them, all of the four would sit up and then their wrinkles face would light up with, smi with smile. Then they would begin stalking, all of them loved the little boy and look forward to his coming on it. So often Charlie mother and father would come in as well and stand by the door. They do listen to the stories told by the old people. Then perhaps for half an hour every night this room would become a joyful place. The whole family was blissfully together. As usual the little Charlie Buckets he used to go into the rooms of his grandparents. And then one evening, when Charlie asked his grandparents that it is really true that Wonka Chocolate Factory is the biggest in the world, then all of the four grandparents said at once that of course it is about 50 times bigger than any other chocolate factory. And then he asked again that, and is Mr. Willy Wonka really the cleverest chocolate maker in the world? That Charlie asked again. Then his Grandpa Joe, he raised himself up a little higher on his pillow and said that my dear boy, Mr. Willy Wonka is the most outstanding, the most remarkable, the most extraordinary chocolate maker in the world and he is very clever, clever. And then another Grandpa George, he also said that he is more than that. He is a magical with chocolate, he can make anything, anything he wants. So. The Grandpa George also says that that Mr. Willy Wonka he can make anything he wants, isn't it? He asks again. 
the little boy. The other three old people, they also nodded their heads and said that absolutely true, just as true as it can be. And then the grandpa Joe said to Charlie that, Have I never told you about Mr. Willy Wonka and his factory? Then the Charlie answered, Never. Then the grandpa Joe asked, Miss, uh, asked little Charlie to sit beside him on the bed and said that, My dear, Listen carefully, the grandpa said to the little Charlie. And then grandpa Joe was the oldest among the four grandparents. He was 96 and a half. So he rested the whole day but, even, but in the evening when his beloved grandson little Charlie was in the room, he became as eager and excited as a young boy. And then the grandpa Joe told the story about the Mr. Willy Wonka again and said that Mr. Willy Wonka has invented more than 200 kinds of chocolate bars and his chocolates are more sweeter, more creamer and more delicious than any other chocolates factories. Then the grandma Josephine said that perfectly true. And then the grandma Josephine said that that the Mr. Willy Wonka used to send them to all the four corners of the earth the chocolate at which he met. And then the little Charlie asked his grandpa Joe that isn't it is it that so? Then the grandpa Joe said that it, it is my dear it is and to all the kings and presidents of the world as well. So now the grandpa Joe also said that even the Willy, the Willy Wonka used to send all the kinds of chocolate that he made to all the kings and presidents of the world. And also he said that, but it is not only chocolate bars, but that he makes. And also says that, Grandpa Joe says that, Mr. Willy Wonka has some really fantastic inventions up his sleeve. And did you not know that he has invented a way of making chocolate ice cream so that it will stay cool without a refrigerator. And you can leave it lying on the sun all morning on a hot day and it won't melt. Then when he heard about that, the little Charlie did not believe and says that that's impossible. And Grandpa Charles also says that of course it's impossible but it's completely observed. See it used to observe if we keep it will be melt if we keep on a sun the ice cream. But the Grandpa Joe says that Mr. Willy Wonka has done it, that it, that he invented a ice cream that which even can live in the sun all morning on the hot days and it wouldn't melt. Then the little Charlie says that it, it is impossible. Then the Grandpa George also says that of course it is impossible, it's impossible. But then Mr. W Willy Wonka has done it. Then the other three grandparents also says that quite right and they agreed and they knew that they had. Then the grandpa Joe continued telling about the Mr. Willy Wonka stories and says that Mr. Willy Wonka can make marshmallow the taste of violets and rich caramels that change color every 10 seconds as you suck them. And little feathery sweets that smell away deliciously the moment you put them between your lips. So the Mr. Grandpa Joe continued telling about the story Willy Wonka to the little Charlie. And he says he also says that he can make chewing gum that never lose the taste and sugar balloons that you can blow up to enamel size before you pop them with a pin and cobbles them up. And besides, he can also make lovely blue bird's egg with black spot on them. And when you put on, when you put one of these in your mouth, it gradually gets smaller and smaller until there is nothing left except a tiny little pin, sugarly baby bird sitting on the tips of your tongue. So this is the story told by the grandpa Joe to the Char little Charlie. So while they were talking about the Willy Wonka, Mr. and Mrs. Pockets, Charlie's parents, they came back and they entered the room quickly and they stood on the door. At the door, they used they stood at the door and they listened to the story that about that Willy Wonka told by Grandpa Cho to the little Charlie. And then Grandma Josephine also says that 
told about this crazy Indian prince. So the little Charlie, he also said that he liked to hear that. Then the grandpa Joe asks, "Do you mean Prince Pondicherry?" Then he giggles and said that, "Ah, eh, strange, but very rich." Then the Charlie eagerly asks, "What did he do?" Then the grandpa Joe said that, "I am going to tell you about that Prince Pondicherry." And then he told about the Prince Pondicherry, the Indian Prince Pondicherry. Then he says that. The Prince Pondicherry wrote a letter to Mr. Willy Wonka and asked him to come all the way to India and build an extremely large palace entirely out of chocolates. Then the little Charlie asked, "Did Mr. Wonka do it?" Then the grandpa replied, that, "Yes, he did." And he asked again what the palace it was. And then the grandpa Joe says that it had 100 rooms and everything was made of dark or light chocolate. So the bricks, the cement, everything was made of chocolate. The windows, walls, and ceiling were all made of chocolate. The grandpa says, and so where the carpets, pictures, furnitures, and the beds were all made of chocolate. So when you turn the taps on in the bathroom. Hot chocolates came pouring out, and when it was all finished, Mr. Wonka said to Prince Pondicherry that I warn you, it won't last very long, so you better start eating it right away. Nonsense! Shouted the prince. So I'm going to eat my palace. I'm not even going to nibble the star cast or lick the walls. I'm going to live in it. But Mr. Wally Wonka was right, of course, because soon after this. There came a very hot day. The sun was blazing hot. The sun was so hot. Then the whole palace began to melt and sank slowly to the ground. So the crazy prince, who was tossing, tossing means a short sleep, especially during the day. So in the living room at the time, woke up to find himself swimming around in a huge brown sticky leg of chocolate. So little Charlie sat very still on the edge of the bed, staring at his grandfather, and says that Charlie sat wide-eyed, unable to trust Grandpa's story. At last, he said that it is really true, or are you pulling my leg? So the little Charlie, when he heard the story about the Mr. Willy Wonka told by his Grandpa Joe, he did not believe it fully because because the Palace met by met with the chocolate was melted away on a sunny day. So this is the end of the story about the Charlies and the chocolate factory. Thank you, students. Stay home and stay safe, and always keep in touch with your books for your final exam.